Hi, I'm Patricia from Trisha's Lovely Creations, and today we're going to create fairy garden mushrooms. What I've got here is my board drilled with holes for small and larger mushrooms, and their stems are made of uh, bamboo skewers, and I paint them white, and then I put a uh, deep shine resin on them, because you can brush that on and it stays put, and uh, then hopefully they will not break off in the ground from them getting wet. And I've got some already painted, and I'm going to paint the rest of them here. I like to make them a little long. That way I have something to hang on to. I use a pair of pliers or the round nose pliers, whichever. And then I just paint my stick. Just making sure I get it everywhere. And I plop it back in the hole and grab my next one. It looks a little dark. I might have to brighten that up some. There we go. Let me try to brighten this up. Okay, there we go. Now maybe you can better see what I'm doing. My brush is getting a little thick. It's about time to rinse. <laughs> Start over. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush off, and I'm going to start painting again. I've got four more to go, so I'm just going to finish them up, and then we'll put on the deep shine, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I'm back, and these have dried overnight, so now I'm going to put on my Tiny Pandora Deep Shine Brush on UV Finish. And I'm only going to do a few at a time. And depending on how tall, if you have a, a Tiny Pandora UV Light, you're going to need to raise it some. <clears throat> Pardon me. You'll need to raise it uh, depending on how tall you've made your stems. And I've had to raise mine. So... Now I keep it in my drawer, um, just in case the light gets through the white bottle. I'm assuming that's what happened. I don't mind getting it on my fingers, it doesn't bother me. I haven't had any kind of reaction to it or anything. Okay, and I've got my brush here, and I need to get out a paper towel. Need a fresh 
one. I don't want to get my brush dirty. And I hear my water softener starting up, so I'm going to try to do this real quick before it kicks in real hard. Get out my pliers again. Dip it in there and just brush it on. Try and make sure I get it all covered. Sorry, I know you can't see. I pulled it to my chest. Sorry about that. Just trying to make sure I get it all covered. Especially that tip. There we go. <clears throat> so just brush it on like you do your paint. It's real easy. Making sure you get that tip real good. I found that I can use the whole skewer. I got my pencil sharpener, electronic pencil sharpener, or electric pencil sharpener. <laughs> and I use that just to sharpen the tip back up. That way I don't waste any part of the skewer. And I think that's got it. And I'm going to continue brushing on the UV resin. And I'll be back when they're done. I'm back and my stems are done. And these are the colors I'm going to use to make mushrooms. I'm using Sunshine. Uh, one of my mixes called Pretty Pink. Um, from New Color Tuesday. I call it uh, Mushroom Green. Also from New Color Tuesday. It's Sculpey. I call it Spearmint. And I got uh, one I made. Princess Peach. Purple Pearl. Uh, Peacock Pearl. Fuchsia. Turquoise. Pomegranate. Orange. And wasabi. Those are the colors I'm using. You can use any colors you want to. But that's what I'm using today. And I want to show you one of the skewers that's done. Um, what I'll do is take this and clip off excess with one of my pliers, or not pliers, my cutters here. And that's what I'll use to make my hole in the bottom of the mushroom. So let's get going. Okay, I'm back and I have my sunshine yellow rolled out on a setting zero on my Atlas 150. I got my finger coats on and I've got the uh, smallest cutter in my metal set and I'm just going to cut out two of those and let's see if I can find my blade here <clears throat> didn't make sure I had everything out I don't see my little one so I'll have to use my bigger one here and I just want about that much cut off. 
So about roughly one and three fourths. Put them together. I guess get where you can see me. Angle that up a little better. And there we go. Just moisten it all together, make sure it's good and together. And I'm going to roll it into a ball. Try not to squish it. Okay. And now with my fingers, I'm just going to kind of spin it and shape it. Pushing with my thumb to flatten the bottom. Don't worry about if you're getting dust specks and everything on it. We'll take care of that with a Q-tip and some alcohol. Okay, just about there where I want it there. Just about. It kind of looks like a gumdrop. Okay, I think that one's pretty good. I'm going to take my barbecue skewer here that's all finished. Put it about in the middle. Oops, lightly push it on there. So you don't misshape it too bad. I just kind of twist. Kind of pushing it down on there. Making sure I have a good hole. Because we're not going to bake them on these, we're going to set them on the uh, dish. Flat side down except for the tall ones. I'm doing a mix here, by the way, and these are extra large is what I'm doing. They are approximately somewhere between 14 and 16 millimeters around. Okay. I need a Q-tip and my alcohol. I don't know if you can see it. They got pretty icky. Even though I washed off my hands before I got started. Never get rid of all the dust that's on my hands. So I just take a ketchup with some alcohol, wiping it off. Okay, 
double checking it here. Looks good. So I'm going to put it on my tray that has a towel on it. Close that up. That side. Throw that away. And I'll put this up and go on to the next color. I'm back with my next one rolled out on the setting zero. And we're going to cut two shapes out of it. Just like the last one. Cut off that little bit. So I have about one and three fourths. Pinch it together. Try to make sure there's no air in it. And just like the last one, I'm doing what I call my original mushrooms because I made other shapes later on. This one's going into shape nicely. down on there. And don't worry if it misshapes it a little bit at the bottom. No mushroom is perfect. So it just makes it look a little neater. fuzzies on it. Get my alcohol out again. One of my tip. Just wipe it down. Some of the bits are a little stubborn. Sorry, I know I'm really quiet. I'm concentrating. Try not to push too hard. Just enough to get that lint off there. A 
Okay. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it without destroying it. Yeah, that's good. I'll pop that off and pop it on my cookie sheet. And on to the next. Also, I just wanted to mention that in between colors, don't forget to clean off your finger coats because they're going to have the color on them and you don't want that wiping off onto your next collar. What I do is take a clean Q-tip with some alcohol and wipe them down as well. It's really easy. It just comes right off. I got my recording all mixed up. <laughs> I cut this out the same as before, thickest setting. I cut out two. I've got roughly one and a half here. I'm getting rolled up into a ball. I'm doing what I call my flat top mushrooms, and they are also about 14 to 16 millimeters around. Roll it up in the ball. And start pushing on it. Almost the same as the other one, but instead of pushing on the sides, we're going to push down on the top as we spin it. And we want it flat. We want those edges, though, to be rounded. So after you flatten it, kind of go around and flatten them edges or make them softer where they just don't drop off. Kind of looking for a Mario mushroom. Okay, that looks good. Okay, twist it in there. And don't push too hard, you're going to come right up the center of that. want to clean it off. It's got dusties on it and mine does. I swear I could be in a room of nothing but pure white. No dust at all and yet I would still get dust and lint all over my mushrooms. Never fails.
Oop, looks like I got it all. Okay, I'll get my next. Um, I'm just going to start showing you one mushroom from each batch. I'm making two of each. And I've got six of them. So, I'll just show you how to make one and move on. Okay. And I've got, again, my Princess Peach rolled out on a setting zero. And this time we're going to be making what I call my flower top mushroom. And we'll need two of these. Squish it together real good. Just like the other ones. Roll it into a ball. And I'm kind of like the first ones, the original mushrooms. I just want to kind of get that shape going. But I want a more pointed center. So I'm pushing a little bit harder. Yeah, I've got that point going. I'm going to kind of start pinching the sides a little more. A little bit harder as I go around. Yes, it's starting to look like a nipple. That's what you want. Okay. Now I'm going to do it a little bit harder here, or pretty hard I should say. And these ones are going to be about 27 millimeters around. And you don't want that to be too as sharp of a drop, so kind of pinch back up at that nipple. And smooth it out. Okay, now I'm going to take the opposite side of my craft knife and I'm going to put little marks in it. I'm going to kind of make it look like flower petals. Now I'll get the stick. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll get the stick here. Find the center. Twist it in there real good. I'm just kind of push down. Now here comes the fun part. Middle finger, index finger, thumb. Kind of push up with your thumb and your middle finger and push down with your index finger. I don't know if you can see that. You kind of want to make it wavy. Go to the next spot. Same thing. Push up, push down. Just want it to be wavy. I if I could get a view here. There you go. That's what you want. 
inspect it for dust, and of course there is. <clears throat> alcohol in the Q-tip. Try to take care of that. Now, where did I see it? And I think that's got it. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm not worried too much about getting it perfect because we're going to be painting these. If you have a speck, it's a good spot for your paint to go. <clears throat> Carefully lift it off. About like that. Put it on your tray. And I'll make another one and I'll be back for the next mushroom. Okay, and here I have my purple pearl rolled out on thickest setting. And just like before, I'm going to make two cuts. And this time we're going to be doing my curly top mushroom. little bit and pinch it together. Roll it into a ball. Zoom out a little bit. My camera slid again. There we go. Okay, now we're going to take it, make it into a point. Kind of a teardrop shape. Flatten the bottom. to be a little more pointed. Looks good. Then carefully take and bend it. There we go. 
sure that curly top. Carefully insert the bamboo stick. I like to put it in there pretty deep. So a little bit of pressure to get it to go up in there. Trying to make sure I don't mess up the shape. There we go. And I'll be laying this one down like this to bake because it won't stay standing up. And I'll do the next one and then I'll come back with the next mushroom. Okay, I'm back and I have my peacock pearl rolled out in the thickest setting. And this time we're going to be making what I call my cone top mushroom. And again, we're going to cut out two of these. We're going to leave them full. Pinch it all together. <clears throat> Roll it into a ball. Okay. Yeah, I just want to bring that to a little point. Not much. kind of work that like we did the original mushroom after you get it into a point there not a super point you want it to look like a cone There you go, something like that. And pop the stick in. Okay, need the alcohol because I got something on there. There we go. Well, if I could quit putting it back on there, that'd be great. looks good and I will set that setting up on my tray and I'll show you what my tray looks like before I pop it in the oven
Okay, so I'm gonna work on my next one and then I'll be back with the last mushroom. Okay, and here I have my fuchsia rolled out on the thickest setting. And we are gonna make what I call stretched mushrooms. And they're kind of like the uh, curly top mushrooms, except you don't put a curl in them. And let's see, we need two cups. We'll keep them whole. Mush it in together. Make it into a ball. Tape for a teardrop, like so. Trying to get that point a little longer. Don't want it too pointy. Just a little bit. I kind of stretch it back. Or it looks like that. Just a little stretch back in it. Stick it in and push down, get it up in there. <clears throat> See it? Pretty cool. and make sure that I'm not going to push out one of the sides here. That should be good. There we go. And I'll make the next one and then I will show you what they look like on the tray. Okay, and here they are laid out on my cookie sheet tray, whatever you want to call it. And I've got a Scott's blue towel, shop towel, underneath so I don't get shiny spots. And I'm going to put these in the oven and when I get back I'll show you how to glue them to the sticks and then we can get to painting them. Okay, and my mushrooms just came out of the oven so I'm going to go ahead and get these ready. As soon as I find my clippers here. And I'll just snip it off about there. I'm sure you don't want to watch me snip all of these. So I'm going to do that, get them ready, and I will be right back. Okay. 
Okay, and I've got here my Loctite Super Glue Third Gel Control, and we're going to glue these on to the sticks. So what I like to do is take and squeeze it on there, making sure I get good coverage. I just kind of twist it in there to make sure I get it all over in there. Push it down. And then set it aside to let it dry. <clears throat> That's all there is to it. And so that's all I'm going to be doing is gluing these on there. So I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me do all of them. So I'll be right back. Okay, now that they are done, the glue has dried. Now I'm going to take some acetone and wipe them down with that and a Q-tip to get all the fingerprints off that may have been left behind. Even though I was wearing the uh, little finger coats, fingerprints still go through those if you push too hard. So I just like to make sure that I have no fingerprints on them because when you paint over it you will see the fingerprints. So I just go over it really good. Go. And I'll just go through doing all these like this, trying to make sure I got all the fingerprints off. So that's all I'm going to be doing, and as soon as I get them all done, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and I'm ready to paint, so what I'm going to do is pull some of these out. I'll pull them all out, set them to the side. That way, as we paint them, I can put them back in the rack. And here I've got my uh, different stylus. I made this one out of a uh, Sculpey Mold Maker. This one is uh, a stylus for your tablet or phone. I got it in a three pack at Walmart. It's pretty cheap. But it makes a great, uh, great for putting bigger dots on my mushrooms. Yeah, <laughs> so I like to use that one for my large and extra large and medium ones. And then I've got this stylus that I did in the ends in uh, Sculpey Mold Maker also. 
And these ones are just the metal ones. My husband got me a set of these. Okay, and I got some paint. So let's see where I want to start. I want to start with my yellow one. And I want some red on there. Let's see, I've got cardinal red or deep tomato red. I think I'm going to go with the cardinal red. And that is folk art. Cute, yes. Okay, I'm going to do that for the next one. I'm also going to be doing my original mushroom, so I'm going to do it pretty much the same as I did that one. But I'll come back when I paint one of the other ones. Okay, and here I am with my cone top one, and I think I'm going to put blue on it. I'm using Americana from Deco Art, Ultra Blue Deep. 
Yeah, that's what it is. Ultra Blue Deep. Okay, and I am going to do the next one, that's the cone top, and I'll be back to do another one. Okay, I'm back. And now we're going to work on the uh, flat top mushroom. And I am using Apple Barrel Holly Branch.
and I'll do the other one off camera and I'll come back and do another one. Okay, I'm back and now we're going to work on the curly top mushroom. Hmm, I think I want yellow. And I'm going to be using bright yellow from Apple Barrel.
There we go. And that one's done. <clears throat> and I will do the next one off camera and then I'll come back with another one. Okay, I'm back and now we're ready to do the uh, stretchy top mushroom. Pick my color here. I'm going to be using on the fuchsia apple barrels uh, lime tree. There we go, that looks good. And then I'll do the other one off camera. And I'll come back to do the last one. Okay, I'm back and with the last one. 
I got my Princess Peach here, and I think I'm going to put some blue on there. I think I'm going to go with this one. It is Apple Barrel Turquoise. Okay, I'm back. I don't know how much you missed. My camera ran out of memory. So, I'm still working on this one. Okay, and I think that's about all I want to do to that one. And I'm going to work on the next one. And then we'll move on to putting the uh, glitter paint on. I'll be right back. Okay, the first ones I did should be dry enough by now that I can go ahead and put on the glitter paint. And I am using... Delta Summer Coat um, gl Glitter Ice is what I'm using.
I do the bottom and everything. I coat the whole thing. Try not to go too thick. This stuff is thickened up since I've last used it. And some spots for some reason seem like they don't want to cover. <laughs> I have no idea why. Very weird. That looks good. And it's going to be milky. When it dries though, it's crystal clear. So don't worry about that. We'll grab the next one. Do the bottom. There we go. That one's all done. And that's what I'm going to be doing is just sitting here and paint the mushrooms and glitter paint until they're all done. And then I'll wait a few days, let that dry good and dry. And I'll put on some varathane. Uh, I believe I'm going to use the uh, outdoor formula. So, I'll be back when it's time to glaze them. I'm back, and these have finished drying pretty good. It's only been 24 hours, but I think I'm going to go ahead and put some varathane on them, because they feel pretty dry. There's no more tackiness to it. So, I'm going to go ahead and varathane them. And I'm using Varathane Ultimate... Barurethane, I guess is how you pronounce it. It's water-based. It's exterior. So, I think there's supposed to be a UV protectant in this also. I tested these. I tested some with some of my mushrooms with this varathane last year. And I left them in a bag so that if anything happened, I would know right away because leaving them in a bag and they seem to be fine so I stuck them out in my garden this year so I'll see how the UV protectant is in it because some of my other mushrooms have faded so we'll see what it does but that's what I'm using today so I'm going to pull these out that way I don't mess anything up while I'm putting them in Just like paint, just like I did the paint 
that's how I'm going to do these. And I'll probably do about two or three coats. Just to make sure they're coated really good. There's one. Okay, so that's all I'm going to be doing. I think that's pretty straightforward, so I'm going to finish up the rest so I don't bore you in the video. And I'll be back when they're done. Okay, they're all done with the Varathane. Now I'm just going to let them dry probably for about 8 hours or so, and then I'll recoat them with another layer. And then I'll be back. And I'm back, and they're all done. I ended up putting three coats of Varathane on them. Now all nice and shiny. I don't know if you could really see the glitter, but it's in there. Yeah, I guess you can a little bit. Just make them sparkle a little bit more. So if this video was helpful to you in any way, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And be sure to join my Facebook group, uh, Trissa's Lovely Creations. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.